There are two bathrooms. There's one. I think there's. Yeah, I also teach. I teach. Uh, I teach Emory Continuing Ed some. I teach down at. Uh, I live in Noonan. I teach down at University of West Georgia there, and um, uh, do some photography. I do some. I used to be in the photo lab business, and I uh, still do some custom printing for other people and uh, other photographers and artists. So. But mostly, mostly I try and do my photography. But we have to. But I really enjoy teaching too. So, uh, it's mostly abstract nature, and most of it gets marketed to uh, hotel. In the past, I've mostly marketed to hotels, and um, but I've, I've got hooked up with a couple of galleries and starting to sell a little bit there. So. It's not easy, you know. Teaching's nice because I enjoy it, and it's, um, I know I'm getting paid for what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I have a safety business for a little bit, so what I'm trying to do is hire now. Yeah. And here lately, I've been just up in the price, hoping they wouldn't take it, and they haven't been taking it. So, so I'm just buying more photo stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let me see. I've got to go back in here and... Uh, there we go. There's my layers. Okay. Um, so, we've got a mask here. It's black, so we're not seeing adjustment. And we got our brush set up. Should have our brush set up. And just got to make sure that foreground color is white. And now we're going to go in here with a brush, and we're going to paint the right side of the building. And I'm going to go in. I'm going to set my, now at the top, the option bar. Remember, the options are all our accessories we've got with that tool. And I'm going to set my opacity down to about, maybe 20 percent and then I'm going to go on the right hand side of the building and I'm going to start to shade that in. Density is the same thing as the opacity? Uh, your says density? Under the properties. Under the overall opacity. Now I'm looking up at the top here. Okay. At the top there. Right up here. Okay. I'm, I'm with you now. Okay. Yeah, that's that's your um, that's your options for your brush. So I, if I set it to a, a, a hundred percent opacity, everywhere I brush, it's going to darken it. And if I set it to a very light opacity, and actually I'm going to change my brush and I'm going to change it to a hardness so you can see you can see it be a crisp sharp edge. So there's a light opacity. See what happens there? Now you meet, you know, your options bar can disappear too. Yeah. Um, now you've got, make sure your brush is selected. Oh, just you gotta select that. your brush. Oh, okay, that's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Every time you change a tool, that options bar is gonna change some. Well, I'd say I'd say about twenty, but it, actually, you could right now you can play around with it. Just you know, um, the, the great thing about this working with this mask here is that we can uh, we can change at any point. So here I've got a hundred percent opacity, and you can see my brush is very hard, and you can very clearly see the effects of every time I click once. Every time I click once with this, it's going to give a hundred percent. Now, if I change the opacity. 
to lower, every time I click, it's just going to have a slight change. Each time I click, it's going to add, it's going to add on to it. Click once, click again, and again, and again, and again. And after I've clicked about five or six times, I've, I've got 100% there. Okay. So this is, this is the basics. There's some other aspects about the brush. I'm not going to get into all of it right now. But um, here's, here's basically how, how this brush is working. Now, I've, you know, if you want to play around with this uh, a little bit, go ahead and do it. Just get a feel for how that brush is working and how to work on the mask. The way it's set up right now, every time we click, it gets it gets darker. It gets, and darker. It gets darker because we have it's we have let's see the foreground is white, the background is black, and okay. So why what why is it getting darker when we click? It, when you, whenever you're using a brush tool, mm -hmm. it's painting with your foreground color. So we're what we're doing is we're taking a white brush on that uh, mask. We're painting on that mask. See that little, uh, click on that, and that gets you back in the center. Okay, that's confusing. And it just get it back to the default. Where it says, see, we got two slides. Oh. Yeah, okay, so watch watch up here. I'm going to go back into my history panel, and I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to create an adjustment, and we do the, uh, we did, I did the, the white and the black point. I got that set, and then I did another adjustment. And now I did the, when I do this adjustment, I'm just darkening in it, and I just, you know, but the mask is white, so I'm seeing everything. It's showing all of my adjustment here. And remember, I went into this to the properties panel and we hit that invert button. Now my mask is black and it's not showing me the adjustment. And I'm gonna paint back. Oh, okay, so you're showing more of the adjustment. And now, see now I'm that mask is totally black. And 
I can't see any of that adjustment. And I'm going to paint on the mask so I can show just the adjustment in the parts of the image that I want it to show. Okay. So I'm going to go paint over here on that right side. And I, my brush is still hard. You saw it gave me the hard edges. And so I'm going to let this adjustment show on the right hand side of that building. And if you look down at the little thumbnail of my mask, you can see it's black on most of the image, but white just on the right hand side of the building. Okay, so you're, when you're clicking on, when you're clicking on, on, the, uh, in, on the circle here, you're adding the adjustment you, you made earlier in here selectively. Yeah. And that's what the yeah. Mask is. That's why yeah. I didn't get the What I'm really doing is the adjustment's there, it's just that I can't see it. You blacked it all I out. I blacked it all out. It, so and now I'm unblacking it, it in yeah. certain areas to let it show through. Yeah, sure. yeah, okay. Now an easy way to see this, now with my cursor on the mask, I can hold down the option key, I can click on it, and it'll show me just my mask. What, 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 <laughs> okay. You don't have to you don't have to do this, but I'm showing you for demonstration purposes. Okay. If you're on if you have your cursor on the mask and you hold down the option of the Alt key and click, you should get an image kind of like that. If you select the, the mask. Curs cursor on the mask, on the thumbnail of the mask. Uh -huh. Got it. Cursor on the thumbnail of the mask, mm -hmm. hold down the option of the Alt key. Okay. Um, I see it down here. Click. You go on the mask. Okay. Now you get Alt key. Now, now click on that. There you okay. go. Okay. There you go. So what you what you so this? I mean, you don't have to do this, but if you're working on a mask and you're going like I'm a little bit confused, you're a little bit confused about what where your mask is showing and what. This is one way to look at it. Option click on the mask, and you can option click again or alt click again to make it go away and, and look back at the image again. Wow. Okay. So um, that's one way, one way to do this. So that's kind of a basic adjustment layer and mask and this adjustment layer and a mask is you'll use that like you know most of the time, 75% of the time you'll have an image with, with that. You know, um, and just using a paintbrush typically will will be what you want to do. Um, <clears throat> I, never, I, never, I never got totally how masks work before. It was always kind of a mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and what um, Photoshop is really funny because until you get up to speed to a certain point, you learn a certain number of basic things it's just all kind of a mystery. And then once you get some of these basic things down, um, then you can get more and more into it and, and do more and more with your images. Um, so, you know, hopefully at the end of the day today, you're gonna have, you'd be comfortable with layers and masks and selections, and then you can explore other aspects of that. Like, um, um, well, just lots of things. Um, so anyway, so, um, let me pull my notes back up. Um, label that too, like darken the wall or something. Yeah, you can label that. Yeah, if you want to do something in the sky. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So that way, you uh, you know, you're not you don't get too confused. If you end up with a lot of layers and you start trying to figure out, well, what was that for? You can click on that layer and you can figure it out. But uh, but yeah, labeling's not a bad way to to work with them. Um, all right. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes, make sure I've gone up. There's so much to go over. I just want to make sure I don't miss some things here right now. Um, okay. Let me take a minute, and I'm going to 
uh, kind of go through the adjustments that are over here and just sort of give you an overview of the adjustments. Um, and you can just sort of watch right now. Um, the first one, one of the ones I mentioned was brightness contrast. And I'm going to um, make this bigger so you can see. So brightness, again, this is one of the ones you don't need. I would not worry about uh, brightness contrast. Um, we've got levels. Again, this is one of the ones you don't need. Don't worry about this. You can do everything you can with, uh, uh, with curves and more. Um, we've got curves. We just did that. There's one called exposure. Don't worry about this. You can do more with curves. Um, there's an interesting one here called vibrance saturation. Now, this is really useful. Um, vibrance will increase saturation, and I'm going to crank it way up so you can sort of see what's happening. What it's doing is it's increasing saturation in colors that aren't already really saturated. Tell you what, I'm going to open up another image that will be better for showing this tool. You don't have to open it up right now. You can just watch. I'm just trying to give you a little overview. Okay. So if I want to use brightness, I mean vibrance, it tends to ignore uh, skin tones. And all color skin tones, it's sort of Photoshop is kind of tuned in to, with the vibrance, kind of ignore those, those skin tones. Um, and what if, if you notice what it does, does here is it doesn't really do a whole lot to his face, but it's brightening up that shirt, some, some, and, and it's brightening up some things that aren't already saturated. Like, see those toys, that, that yellow toy in the front, the bright saturated color? I crank that vibrance up. It brings it up a little bit, but not much, but mostly it's bringing up that red shirt. So it's taken... Vibrance is taking some of your subtle colors and give them a little more punch. But it's leaving the skin tones alone and it's leaving these bright saturated colors alone. So Vibrance is kind of a unique uh, adjustment tool just to kind of give your images a little more pop, a little more pop with color. Now, um, there's a, in that Vibrance adjustment, there's a saturation. You can increase that saturation and it's going to go a little bit more extreme. So still it's ignoring those skin tones. Notice it's, it's, it's leaving this, it's bringing up those, those, what it's doing is it's bringing up the bright colors also, but it's ignoring the skin tones. See that there? So now the toys are getting bright, skin tones still in good, good shape. Okay, um, and I'm going to jump ahead here. Oh, actually, it's the next one. It's called hue saturation. Now, in this, I can take the saturation and bump it all the way up, and it's like you know saturation on steroids. So, this is when you want to oversaturate. You don't care what it's going to look like. You just want to oversaturate the colors. And see, that brings the skin tones up also. All right. With the hue saturation tool, you can you can change the hue of colors. I can change the overall shift of the colors. And you can go in here and you can change specific colors. Like I could go in here and just change the reds. So I'm going to make the reds more blue down in there or more yellow. And we can play a little bit more fine-tuning some of this, but I just want to give you kind of an overview of some of these uh, some of these tools. Um, by the way, lightness or darkness in this tool, I don't think it's that effective. It actually desaturates the colors either way you go. You take it lighter, desaturate them. Take it darker, it desaturates them. Um, Color balance, 
you don't need this, you can do everything in curves that you need to do. Uh, black and white is a great tool. How many of you have shot black and white with filters before, back in the film days? Okay, now you do it all in Photoshop. And you I may have known that from some other, from Lightroom and such, but here I can control, I can make his, the red on his shirt, I can, I can darken the reds or lighten the reds in black and white. Um, photo filter is again you can do everything with this tool and curves but I have to admit photo filter is kind of nice because you could look at it I need to get rid of that black and white layer there we go um, photo filter is designed for photographers who are used to like use a warming filter or cooling filter and they know what that color that filter looks like and so rather than using curves to try and figure it out, they use the, uh, they can go in here and change the color of their filter. They want a cooler, cooler look. So I have to admit the photo filter is kind of nice because it gives you, you can immediately kind of see what color cast you're going to put on your image. You know, again, white balance, same thing here. This is just another way to do it. Um, channel mixer, uh, we're, it, it, the, the ways to use this, you get into some advanced uses. I'm not going to go over right now, but later on in your Photoshop career, you might find this very useful. Um, there's something called color lookup tables, and you might like this. This is pretty cool. So this is kind of like if you're familiar with uh, Instagram or some of the smartphone apps that have filters, this is kind of like that. Or maybe you've got a plug-in that you use or there's some um, uh, and you can go in here and you can look select a filter you can create your own filters you know and what it's doing is called a color lookup table and what it's doing is mapping it's looking at a certain color and saying okay we're going to make that color a different color and it's looking at a lookup table and say anytime we encounter a bright blue we're going to make it a cyan something like that um, so that's kind of fun to play with um, and again if you find something you like you, you can also you can you can create your own color lookup you can do some adjustments to an image and say wow I really like the way I got that and you can save it in this color lookup table it's kind of like a yeah It's, it, it's really, it just changes the color balance. Think of it as changing the color balance of the image. But it does it in a very intuitive way because you can just select the color that you want. Like if you were shopping for a, a warming filter or a cooling filter, you could actually just look at the color of that filter and say, okay, that's, that's what I want. Um, the uh, uh, color filter does that. So you can, you can go in here and I can change that color. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't do anything different than if you're uh, doing a white balance adjustment or if you're adjusting your color. I'll show you how you can adjust color and curves. Um, so it's just, it's, it's not a bad tool because it's, it's very intuitive. Um, uh, invert, you're probably never gonna, hardly ever going to use that, but that inverts the image. Flips it back. Posterize. You can select how many levels you want in your posterization. Um, threshold has certain uses, um, which when you get into more advanced stuff, um, but basically it's turning your image into black and pure black and pure white. And selective color. Let me get rid of some of these other layers. So, um, 
selective color is an interesting tool because here um, I can select the reds and I can make them uh, it's not going to show up for me. Hang on a second. Let me. Uh, I got to get rid of some of these. Here we go. Here I can change the color tone of the red. So, like what I'm doing here, and this is a little bit. I'll show you a couple of differences here with this tool. Selective color is a really nice tool. Um, I can change, if you notice, I can go up here in my reds and I can make the reds um, more cyan, which means they don't look quite as red, or less cyan, make them more red. And we can play around with these tools a little bit more. I just want to give you an overview. Um, so now, let me do this. And I just want you to look up here at the screen for a second. So you see when I use the color selective tool, I can adjust that red and see how nicely it adjusts that red. I'm not, I'm not seeing any problems here. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to show you the other tool, other way to do this is with hue saturation. And I can go in here now and I can select the reds and I can change the hue of them. But see what happens. This gets extreme and see how I get a little posterization going on but I've gone to an extreme here now see what happens there you can see where it's the edges of that toy of course I've, I have gone to extremes in here and this is sort of uh, the um, the selective color tool is more of a subtle way of doing this and in a way that doesn't you know degradate your image any so So the selective color is nice to adjust a color if you want to shift the hue of a color. And then you've got gradient map, which makes a gradient. Um, you don't encounter that too often. So um, what I want you to, the, the, the tools, and you can write this down, the tools you should learn, the adjustments you should learn to work with are curves, Vibrance, hue saturation, black and white, for more advanced work, channel mixer, um, right now, color lookup table. Is, is a great tool, a lot of fun. Um, and selective color is a great tool. You can pretty much ignore the rest of them. Okay. Your photography will improve if you learn, just work with those few tools. It's a little bit less than half of them. And, and just learn those really well. And you can do anything with an image that you can do with the others. So don't confuse things and try and learn it all. You know, you can take one tool, take like your curves tool, do the same thing as three others. So just learn the curves tool. Um, okay. So I wanna go back to the, um, actually I'll just leave him open. Um, I'm gonna go back to, um, this uh, uh, Death Alley image. And then I'm going to go back. I had painted on it before, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go back and reset my black and my white point. Okay. Now, and, and we, and we, uh, painted on that to uh, to get that yeah okay you can go up into your history panel 
So if you look up the, for all all y'all's sort of purpose, you can look at your history panel. You can go. You can step back up. So in fact, I'll do it for you here. So let's say I accidentally create a black and so I got a black and white layer here now. That's probably what you got on your image. It's a black and white layer, adjustment layer. So several ways to get rid of it. I can take it and drag it down into the trash. There's a little trash can down here. I can drag it into the trash. That's one way. I could also hit the delete key, make it go away. Um, I could also just turn it off with the eyeball. There's a little eyeball next to the layer, and I can click that on and off. Does that work for you? See, you got a whole bunch of stuff there. And you can scroll down, grab that and scroll. Yeah, either way. Yeah, see, you can step back. And you see, oh, that's, see where it says new black and white layer? You can go back above that. So you can, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. cool. All right. Yeah. Remember that history panel is real useful. Um, Okay, so now I want to just do a basic, uh, we're going to do a little bit of selections now. Um, and I just want to do some um, basic selections. Uh, let's go to, um, let me just check one thing here, see if, I, okay. Um, let's go open up another image. It's called yoga. Let's open this up. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna um get into this a little bit more and um, we're gonna we're gonna repeat some of these things again and again and I want you to do it just because it's a little bit more practice we'll get a little bit better at it so so if you've got this image open let's create a curves adjustment layer if you remember you go into your adjustment panel go into your adjustment panel you're not sure you can look up at the screen here right now and there's that little um, curved layer click on that and you should get another layer saying curves okay and so we're going to do just like we did before in Death Valley let's say you want to darken the image or lighten the image let's say in this case let's lighten it let's try and let's try and lighten up some of the people a little bit <clears throat> I'm gonna lighten it pull my curves up are we there Yeah, 
create a new background layer, just click on the go to the adjustment panel and click on curves. Okay. And you yeah. lost your you lost yeah. the panel, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, never you can get pretty good at that. Before, but this this I can't do the adjustment panel. Like go to go to window, top go to window. Okay. Y'all should get real used to doing adjustment panels. So let's lighten it up. So you just grab that, grab that line and pull it up a little bit. Let's lighten it up a little bit. All right. And then let's go down to the curves mask. Make sure that it's click on that, make sure it's highlighted. And we're going to invert it again. We're going to uh, make it go black. Now you can you can do this in your in your mass panel or you can also hit control or command I for invert. We'll make it black also. And I'm going to click on that so that hid my adjustment. Does everybody have a black mask now? And so we're just going to go paint back in again, just like we did with the other one. We're just doing a little more practice here. And I'm going to get your brush tool, get your brush tool out. Make sure it's the hardness is down low, at least 25 or below. And get a real tiny brush. Get your opacity low, probably about 20%. And let's just go in and lighten up some of these, some of the faces and wherever you want on some of the people. Okay. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Um, we can do it another way, though, probably a little bit better way, because you see what happens with the brush tool is that you're going to spill over on the edge of the people. You're not really going to lighten them up that much. Okay, um, let's, um, let's take this, this adjustment we just did, and we don't have to get rid of it if we want to, we can just turn off the eyeball right now. See the little eyeball next to it? Click on that. It saves all the work we've done, but now we just it's not part of the image. So we just can't see it anymore. Did y'all see what that little eyeball got that turned off? Okay. So let's do this another way. We're going to do this with a selection this time. Um, let's say we want to lighten up these shadows and the people. Um, now there's several different selection tools, and I'm going to do a very we're going to do a very obvious one first. Get your lasso tool, and it's way up here near the top of the toolbar. 
it's that little lasso symbol and you just click on that and now you go in here and you just lasso part of the image again this is going to be a real rough so I'm just we're just playing around right now just sort of getting a feel for how to do these selections okay now you got something selected with the lasso tool okay you there Gary you there yeah. okay so now go and click on an adjustment layer and see what happens and you should get another adjustment layer with a mask and notice the mask what type of adjustment layer curves curves yeah let's do another curves and notice that mask is already white and the rest is black so when you select something and then you go and create an adjustment layer Photoshop is saying oh obviously you just want to show your selection so we're going to go ahead and make everything else black anyway how fine yeah. should the selection be how what how fine in terms of being close to the edges of the particular subject that you want because I uh, just did a general, and it, and it didn't come near the edges of the person. Right, right. Yeah, we want to we want to get very good at selecting. Right now, I'm just using this as kind of a uh, real rough okay. demonstration, just to sort of see. Hey, every time you select, all I want you to learn right now is when you select something, and then you make an adjustment layer, it automatically takes care of the mask for you. You know. Um, so let's turn the eyeball off on that one also. Um, and let's um, and let's go up here and what we're going to do is we're going to select try and select out the shadows of the people and I want you to go up to the um, uh, there's several ways you can get to this probably the easiest way for me to show you now is go to select and color range and when you see color range this is a really useful, powerful tool. Um, the default should be sampled colors. Are y'all at this menu here? Yeah. Okay. So at the top it says sample colors. So you can go in and you can sample certain colors. Like I could go and I can select this green up here. And if I click on that green, I can add to my selection by hitting that plus eyedropper and going back in the green, selecting more different shades of green. And I can change my fuzziness to increase it. So let's say if I want to, um, I'm not going to worry about the people right now, we'll do that in a second. But let's say I want to change that green insulation. So I've selected the green, and I can change this fuzziness. If you, if, you, if you look up here and you can see me playing around with this slider, you can see where it, um, if more to the right, there's more tolerance, it's going to pick up other details. And to the left, it's going to show me, and I'll have to say OK. Now, um, Oh, I forgot one step. So what you've got to do before you do that with the color range, you've got to make sure you're selecting something that has color in it, okay? So if we had, like I just had my mask selected while I was doing that, it didn't select anything because there's no color in there. I've got to make sure the background layer is, is on, is, is, is highlighted color range and I'm going to go in here again 
And I go, and now I get my marching ants. And that's what you should have. Y'all do that? You do that with the lasso tool too? Or? You can go with the lasso tool, but we're going to use, we will use the collar range tool now. And uh, let's go, go and make sure your background layer is selected so you cancel out of that. Go down. Scroll down. Arrow key down. You need to get to the bottom there. So at the top, say sample, you got a sample color, that's good. Take your eyedropper and you click on the green. Yes, on the sir. Green yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. And just click on the green and in the image. There you go. Okay. Now let me, um, you got to go up to change that from greens to sample colors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. So I'm going to watch me. I'll go over, I'll do it again. Um, Uh, so um, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to make sure my background is selected select down to color range and it's sampled colors is what I want to look at I'm going to take the eyedropper make sure that's turned on and I, I click on the green over there in the insulation now there are different shades of green in there, and I want to get all the shades of green. So after I click once, I'm going to go over here and click the eyedropper with the plus. And I'm going to go back into that green and going to make several selections. I want to get all the shades. And you can see what's going to happen. You can see you have the little preview, the little black and white preview there. Is showing you what's going to be selected or not selected. And you can adjust your fuzziness. You want to get more accurate or less accurate. Generally, you want it somewhere in between. And then you say OK. <clears throat> and I should get marching ants. And then once you got that, um, Gary, just click OK. So now we've got now now we're 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 starting to see that the selection thing is is pretty cool. Um, now we can go in and we can um, <clears throat> let's let's click on our hue saturation tool. 
in the adjustment panel going to hue saturation. And we can reduce the saturation of that green. or change its color a little bit. Does that work for y'all? good your selection is you know you may have found that okay it, I did, you may find you didn't select enough and you want to go back then you go back up into your history panel and you go back to uh, redo you, know, you can go back and redo it now I'll, I'll give you a little I'll give you a little tip here so <clears throat> let's say I've um, um, when, um, well, maybe we don't want to go that far yet. Um, so this is basically, color range is a very useful tool to select out, you can select out by colors. Now, this would be a good thing to show you now. Um, let's go back and let's, um, either turn off that eyeball for that last adjustment layer, you can throw those layers, you can throw all those layers away if you want to. Start back over with your background layer. Let's go back into the color range tool again. Now, remember we did, okay, we did sampled colors before. You can also go in here and select your highlights or your shadows. Let's go and select the highlights. And this is sort of where I was getting at. This is one way where we can um, lighten up these people. Um, <clears throat> we can go in here and, and see, I've just, I've selected highlights. And I say, okay, and I'm getting a lot of marching ants now. We, are, we have selected, you, yes, when you make a selection, you're not affecting any part of that image. You're just selecting it. Now, if I was on the background layer, and um, y'all don't have to do this, I'm just going to show you. So if I'm on the background layer, and I grab my paintbrush, and I've got uh, black here as my paintbrush color, and I start painting, <laughs> guess what? I'm painting on my background layer. So that is destructive. So you gotta pay attention kinda of like what, when, you're, when you're using some of these tools, particularly one of your paintbrush tools, pay attention to what you're working on. You know, um, so some people like to play it very safe. It'll increase your file size, but you could always, um, Play it safe by copying the first. Some some people recommend the first thing you do is you copy your background layer, and that may be a good way for you guys to work for a while. 
All I did was I'd grab my background and there's a new layer button there and I just grabbed it down to there and let go and it makes a copy. You can also go over to layer and duplicate layer and that'll make a copy. And there's probably a shortcut for it. There's, uh, yeah, let me see. Layer, duplicate layer. Yeah, I, th I think it is Control J. Yeah, control I think J. you're right. Yeah, Control J is another way to do it. So there's always more than one way to do it in Photoshop. So that might be a real good, safe way because you brought up a good point. Yeah, you can. We can. All, all of a sudden, we're starting to do something and we realize that we've messed up. But this way, we've got a little safety layer there. If we do start to draw on something, it's just going to be on a copy and we can get rid of that if we want to. Um, now the downside to this is gonna increase your file size unnecessarily. But, you know, until you get comfortable with Photoshop, you might wanna do that. Um, or get, you know, anyway. This is, it may be a good way to do it anyway. Okay. So now we've selected the highlights in here and um, if you, we can, again, we can go in here and we can, um, uh, but, so we want to lighten up the people. But we've got the highlights selected. So we actually want to do the inverse. But it's a lot easier, it's a lot easier first to select those highlights we could also select shadows, but maybe in this case we decided it was easier to select highlights. But we can we can flip it over. We can go into our selection, and you can go to inverse of your selection, and you can reverse your selection. So, for instance, let's say you've got a picture of a of a red flower and there's a green forest behind it. But that forest has got some other colors in it. Red is the only color of that. You might want to select the red first and then invert it and then everything else you could change. You know, so in other words, you may find it's better to select the opposite of what you want to affect and then just inverse your selection. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll pull up an example. So let's say, like, uh, um, I'll go back to uh, where's Luke? I thought I had Luke here. Um, <clears throat> so let's say, if, yeah, there he is. He was minimized. So let's get a picture of Luke here, and let's say I just want to select. I want to darken everything except for that red block. Well, there are a lot of colors everywhere. It might be a lot easier for me to go in here and say color range, sample colors, and I'm going to select that red. And then I'll say OK. And I've selected that red. And then I'll inverse my selection because it's a lot easier to select out that red than it is to try and select everything else. And now I can darken everything but the red block. So it's just another way to approach the problem. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we're back in this. And now we've selected the shadows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a curve selection. I'll tell you what first I'm going to do is I've got, I've got mostly shadows selected, but I feel like there's a little bit more I could have done. Um, I can go in here. See, like down on the bottom left. I can go in here now with my lasso tool. And when I'm in my lasso tool, 
If you notice, with most of your selection tools up at the top, there are these four buttons. One is new selection, that's called new selection. That means if I do any kind of selection, oh, I'm sorry. If I do, if I'm in my lasso tool up here, and um, if I do a lasso, what happened? So I had an old selection, the selection I was working on, and then I made a new selection. It totally erased my old one. So that was with new selection on. I'm going to back up. Let's say I'm going to I'm going to click on add to selection. So now I'm going to see that corner. I wanted to get that. Um, um, Actually, I want to get that corner out of my selection, not in my selection. There's a subtract from selection, so I can click on that, and I can go in here with my lasso tool, and I can subtract that from my selection. So if I felt like, well, I really just wanted, I didn't, I didn't want to select any of this down here, I could go in here and lasso that. So you can start to manipulate a selection with multiple tools. You can add to or subtract from with uh, your lasso tool, your magic wand tool. We've got a lot of selection tools over here we can use. Well, so so let so you've we've got you've got your color range. You just did that, and why don't you why don't you you can do this also with me. Go get your lasso tool, which is the third one down on the left. Okay, you might have lost your selection. Yeah. If your marching answer missing. Go back in your history. Look in your history panel. Yeah. Okay. You can go back up. Go back. Go to your lasso tool, and right now it's going to, if you do it now, it's going to give you a new selection. It's going to erase all the others. So you want to add to or subtract from. See at the very top there, you have that subtract from, and there's add to. Okay, so now I'll see that on my screen. right up at the top here. Now let me show you on my, on my screen. <coughs> everybody look, everybody look up here. It's right up here at the top. There's new selection. There's add to, there's subtract, and this one this one shows you where two selections intersect. That's rarely used, but mostly we'll use add to or subtract from. And where are you saying add the one with two boxes? Yeah, the one with two boxes. Let's use add. You could use either one. You could play around with either one right now. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just lasso an area like. Oh, okay. Now I see it. You see what's happening? Yeah. And it adds to it. So I'm just adding to right now. And if I wanted to. So what are we basically adding here? You're adding, you're adding another selection. You're select, it's, like you're, you're, it's like you're making two selections and you're adding them together. You're adding color range to a lasso tool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everybody hit control D or command D. Let's let's erase our selection. Let's let's just play around with this a little bit. You can use your lasso tool and you can do a circle like I did up here. And you can add, 
I can. Because you've got new, so let's say, look, if I've got new selection turned on at the top of that bar. No, it still has the two boxes. The two boxes? They all went away. Um, now there are multiple lasso tools. Make sure it's just a it's just a pure lasso. It's not polygon. The one, the third one down. That's the third one down. So you got the magnetic lasso tool. Oh, okay. So I got the wrong. <laughs> yeah. The... Just the lasso tool. Okay. Does it have a little plus sign next to it? Now that you've done a lasso, make let's 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 add to it. Um, I'm going to hit Control D. I'm going to back up. So down in the floor here on this uh, construction site yoga studio, I've got a selection there. I'm going to add to it. Now notice this. I can add to it. It doesn't have to overlap. I add to it again, but they can be separate. It's still one considered one selection. Okay, now let's go to subtract. Get subtract selection and go in there and subtract from part of your selection. So we can add to and take away. And if you imagine now doing this with different tools, doing this with color range, and we've got some other tools we're going to get into. So you've got multiple ways you can select out part of an image. And you're going to find that anytime you do a good selection, it's going to require multiple tools, and you'll be adding to and taking away as you, as you fine tune it. OK? Um, OK. All right, so let's 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 take this image and let's ex just we're just going to play around a little bit, explore some of these selection tools. Okay, so that's the lasso tool. <clears throat> I want you to go over and click and hold down on the lasso tool button, and you notice there's a polygon lasso tool, <clears throat> and select that. Now I'm going to hit Control D, so I'll clear everything out, and I'm going to zoom. I'm going to zoom into this image, and the polygon lasso tool is great. If you imagine the lasso tool is really rough. You just circle, and it's kind of a rough, a rough lasso. And let's say I've got some geometric shapes in my image, and I want to select out these geometric shapes. You can imagine trying to draw around a geometric shape would be hard, but if you've got the polygon lasso tool selected, you see it up here, it's got that little, um, just click and hold down, and you'll see it's the middle one, polygon lasso tool. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to select out this, um, this piece of metal here on the floor, and I'm going to click in the corner. And then I'm going to let go and drag, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to let go and move the mouse, click, 
let go, move the mouse, click, and I'm just, I'm just doing little clicks in the corners. And then when I get to the end, back to the starting point, you'll see my, my lasso cursor has a little zero next to it. And I'm going to click, and that's going to select it. So I'd like us to all select out that, um, use the polygon lasso tool to select the, uh, one of these pieces of metal. And when, it, when you see the zero appear, there's a little dot, zero dot, right? Next, there you go, just click. Okay. Yeah. So when you get back to the beginning, and you might need to zoom in to do this. Okay. So you click, you click on it. You just then. click, click on the corner. So all you do is click and then move your mouse. Uh, just click on the corner. And there you go. And when you get all the way to the end, take the most direct path. So you can look up here, Phil. So if you go in and you're doing this, click, 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 and click. And when you get back, it'll, it'll appear with a zero next to it. But if I don't do that and I go over here and double click, It'll just finish it. It'll, and it may not be what I want, you know. So if you can't find your beginning, you can always just double click and it'll make a beeline to it. All right, so that's the polygon lasso tool. So how do you remove that? Yeah, if I want to. Okay, well, that's a great question. So I could do, now that I've made that and I made a mistake there, I can go up here at the top on the menu bar and click subtract and now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click and I'm going to subtract and I show you I can and here I might change just to my lasso tool and I could subtract that Well, that's one way, but then the problem with that is that um, it's either if we're, <clears throat> if you're just working on the background layer, it's just, it's going to be clear, there's going to be nothing there. So let's say if you want to delete that object, you want to get rid of it. There's, there's some better ways to, to get rid of it, but let's just say for, for, let's say we want to copy it. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've got that, that piece of metal selected, this is a real easy one. Um, you could go over here to um, copy, and you can it just just like you do with word processing. You can Control C or Control V to paste, and we're going to just copy and paste it. Okay, which which uh, selection did you make? Is it top there? Is it I went to edit, 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 okay, edit and copy, copy, and then paste. Yeah, yeah. Now, nothing's changed on my image. Look, look up, look up at my image here. Nothing's changed. I do have a new layer here all of a sudden, but what it's done is it pasted it right on top of the other, so I just can't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you've done that, go over to the very top of your toolbar and click the Move tool, and now. With that new layer selected, I can drag it elsewhere. And so there I've got a, another copy of that piece of metal.
So you, what you did, you, you, you haven't copied and pasted yet. So go to, go to copy with control C. Go, I'm sorry, edit, and you go edit. Well, I'm going to hit control C. Okay, then hit control V. And where's it going? It's right oh, there, okay. the yes. brand new layer. It. Now it's right on top of the other one, you can't really see it. Mm -hmm. So go grab your move tool. Is up the very top corner there, there, and just and now just go into the uh, somehow we got, we got that selection. Get rid of that selection, Control V, and now just move it. There you right. go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we have two. You should have two little pieces of metal there. So now, uh, when you're in your move tool, I just saw something with um, that Phil was doing. When you're in your move tool, there's this button up here. You look up here at my menu, it's auto select. When that is turned on, you will, wherever you click, it's gonna select that layer. So if you notice, I wanna move this separate layer. If I'm in, I've got auto select, and I click, notice it went to the background layer. Auto select will select whatever you click on, which is nice sometimes 
but not as nice. For right now, make sure that's turned off and it'll be easier for you to keep track of what you're trying to move around. So that's a real basic. So what we did was a basic copy and paste and move. Now, um, let's back up and let's, or you don't have to back up, but let's make sure you got your background layer or your background copy layer selected. And what we're going to do is um, <clears throat> we're going to use the uh, polygon lasso tool. And here we hold down the lasso tool, I mean not polygon, magnetic, magnetic lasso tool. And the magnetic lasso tool is kind of neat. It'll automatically and that's not working, I'm too far away, but it'll just, you just click and you just go around the edges and I stay, I keep those crosshairs away from what I want to select, but I keep that circle within range and it, it's like a, it, it finds the edge. <clears throat> So take that magnetic lasso tool and try and find the edge right now. So the magnetic lasso tool um, is another great way if you've got a clearly defined shape. Okay, so let's, I'm going to use it on, on, in this image. Uh, I don't have to, you know, that's, that's a geometric shape, but let's say, let's say this woman here, let's say I want to select her out. I could use the magnetic lasso tool to go around her since she's got this jacket on that provides a nice edge and she's got black pants on and everything else is light, the magnetic lasso tool is one way to select. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm gonna deselect out of there this is just kind of an overview of selection tools that I'm giving you right now. Um, let me, it's almost 12 o'clock. It's um, amazing how, how much there is to teach you. Um, so there's another tool up here called the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. And I'll demonstrate those real quickly. Quick selection tool is very much like the magnetic lasso tool. Um, and it does it very quickly. <laughs> See what it just did. All I, can, I can go in here and I can just select in her black. Boom. Did y'all see that? So do that. Go get the quick selection tool and, and just click on the, uh, the woman with the black. And you'll see it'll just...
how when you, when you use that cursor in the quick selection tool, you want to stay inside what you want to select. Okay, so the magnetic lasso tool, um, we wanted to stay on the outside of what we're going to select. With the quick selection tool, you want to stay on the inside. But if you notice, the quick selection tool can quickly select the wrong thing. Um, you've also got a feature up here. Let's see if it'll do it in this case. Select subject. I'm curious. Okay, it did it. So if you're in the quick selection tool, look at the very top. It says select subject. You can just push that button and Photoshop will look for the people. Or if there's an object in there, it's very obvious it'll, it'll do that. But here it did, it did a not too bad of a job of selecting the people. <clears throat> so what you can do now, but all of these selection tools, you're going to find, you're going to need to fine tune it. Uh, for example, if I wanted just to select her, and I noticed the uh, select subject got a little bit of the background also, I'm going to need to go in there probably with another tool and I might be able to go in here and subtract. So you're, you're, you're going to find that with any of your selections, you're going to need to go in and, and adjust them. You're going to add to and subtract from to create your selections. Okay. Um, All right, um, trying to think of what, uh, okay. Um, Would y'all like to, I'm trying to figure out which direction to go now. Do you want to work more on selections? Would you like to see more about combining images or copying and pasting images? What are you most interested in doing with, with your work? What else can you do once you've made the selections? When you make a selection, yeah. that's a great I mean, question. What, what can you do with the areas that you've made? Okay, so let's say I've made a selection in, in a, I haven't finished with the selection. So what I can do here is I can take that I can take these people and I can go to edit, copy and I can go over to another image and go to Death Valley and now I'll go edit, paste. Wait a second. Oh. I can go over here and go edit, paste, and now the people are in Death Valley. Um, so that's one way, you know, if you want to, you know, it looks pretty silly, and my selection would have to be a lot better <clears throat> to make it look realistic. Um, one thing to also keep in mind if you want to do this is you want to take something from one image and put it in another image, You've really got to make sure the lighting is very, very similar. Okay? And that's why they, not only do they look funny because they're floating in air, but um, they, they don't look, they look out of place because the lighting is different. Um, so, 
that's one thing to do. I could also go back to my image here after I've got the selection like we just did. I can make an adjustment. And I can um, lighten up the people. You know, and automatically it's giving me a mask here. Um, I could go in here and I could um, go into color range. No, nope, not that one. Any, any of these adjustments, I can go in here and I can um, take away, I could change the colors. That's probably not a good example. Probably a hue saturation would probably be a better one. I could desaturate the people if I wanted to. Um, and that's not, hang on a second. I lost my selection. There we go, magnetic class up. And I could go in here and I could create a desaturate the people and not everything else if I wanted to. There's a selections enable us to do things to parts of an image and not other parts of an image and not just be painting on a mask because painting on a mask is not very accurate. Um, <clears throat> Okay, why don't we take a little break? If y'all need to use the restroom or um, if you want me to find out if there's any coffee here, I can do that. Y'all need any coffee or anything?